Hello friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video we are going to discuss about Lobry D. Bruin Van Ekinston Rearrangement. So what is the main aim of this rearrangement where the D factors should get converted to D glucose and D mannose. So we know that the D glucose and D mannose are considered as epimers. So why they are considered as epimers we are going to discuss it later. So the D fructose can be converted to D glucose and D mannose by using a salt called as sodium hydroxide NaOH. Right. So if you want to see it in a structure form. So have a look here. So this is a D fructose. So we know that the D fructose is 6 carbon compound. The D glucose is 6 carbon compound and even the D mannose is also a 6 carbon compound. So this will be the structure of fructose and this will be the structure of D glucose and this will be the structure of D mannose. So this fructose will get converted to D glucose and D mannose with the help of NaOH. So this is just a reaction of the Lobry D Bruin van Ekenstein rearrangement. So there is a big mechanism which is present behind this uh, behind this reaction. So we are going to discuss it later. So before entering into that mechanism, firstly I am going to say you two statements. So listen properly those. So the aqueous solution of D fructose is converted into the mixture of D glucose and D mannose, right? So the D fructose which has been converted to D glucose and D mannose is the aqueous solution. You are going to take it in the form of aqueous solution, right? So the D fructose which is in the form of aqueous solution will get converted to mixture of D glucose and D mannose, right? In the presence of alkali. Alkali is nothing but the NaOH which we have took by tautomerization. And the D glucose and D mannose are considered as epimers. So I have said you that the D glucose and D, uh, D mannose are considered as epimers, right? So why they are considered as epimers? Let us see enough. Actually, there is a differentiation in the arrangement of functional groups only at the second carbon atom. So if you see in the structures of this D glucose and D mannose, so normally there are six carbons, right? So first carbon, second carbon, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And the same here also, six carbon compounds, right? So here, in the second carbon, what will happen is that the functional group arrangement will be different in this glucose as well as the mannose. Whereas in the glucose, the OH group will be represented towards right side. But in the case of mannose, the OH group will be represented towards left side only at the second carbon. The change you can see only in the second carbon, right? So this differentiation, I mean this process of this differentiation is called as epimerization. Right? Hence, these both are considered as epimers. So what are epimers? The D-glucose and D-manus are called as epimers in this case. Right? So now let us see the mechanism which is present behind this reaction. So the reaction begins from the D-fructose where it get converted to D-glucose and D-manus. So how it will get converted? So this will be the structure of the D-fructose where the first carbon consists of CH2OH and we can also write that CH2OH in this form. Right? And now this will get treated with alkali called as NaOH which is called as sodium hydroxide and the reaction separation you can write like NaOH will form Na++ plus plus OH minus. So this OH minus is the ion which contains negative symbol here, right? But the H which is present in this first carbon is a proton. So there will be an interaction between the protein and pro sorry proton and as well as the ion. So we all of us know that such that the OH minus ion will start interacting with this H plus proton. Right, which is present on the first carbon and once it gets interacted then it will lose in the form of H2O. Right? It will move out in the form of H2O water. OH as well as the H will move out in the form of water. So now what is present over here? HOH. See HOH will be present in the first carbon. So that's what we have written here. And remember there is a bond which is present between the carbon as well as the hydrogen. Right? And that bond will form the lone pair electron which will be present on the first carbon. Right? And now what will happen? So now here, C double bond O is present and you are going to write it same, right? So in this way, the structure will be resembled. And now here the lone pair electrons are present on the first carbon, right? And that will get converted to the bond in the form of bond which will be present between the first carbon as well as the second carbon. So you are going to, uh, so here the double bond will be present over here in this way, right? And now along with this, the double bond which will be present over here, one of the bond which is present in the double bond will get shifted to this uh, oxygen atom such that it will form the lone pair electrons which will be represented as a negative ion such that this will act as an ion. So this will act as an ion. So now what will happen? The same structure I have drawn here, don't get confused. So now this will get reacted with water, right? So this ion which has been formed will get reacted with water and here the water the reaction of the water can be given as H2O will 
uh, will form H plus plus OH minus ions. And here the H plus is a proton and this OH minus is the ion, right? And here the ion is present over here. So O minus is nothing but the ion form, right? And now this is a proton form and this proton will get interacted with this O minus ion, right? Once it get interacted, then it forms the OH, right? OH group. So that's what I have represented in the next structure. So now what will happen? This is the structure which has been resembled from this when it is treated with H2O. And now what will happen? So here the CHOH, I mean you can write like this, right? So there will be a bond which will be present between O as well as the H, right? And now that bond will get shifted to this uh, CH and O, I mean this bond, such that it will form double bond over here. And now what will happen? Here there is a double bond, right? And one of the bond will get shifted to this carbon atom and once the bond will get shifted to this carbon atom such that the H which is present over here will get shifted and will get binded over to this carbon atom and now one, once it get binded over to this carbon atom then the structure will be resembled in the form of a glucose so if you see here what will happen the bond which will be the bond which is present over here will get shifted over here such that the CH double bond O will be present and now what will happen uh, the H which is present over here will get shifted over to the second carbon. So that's what we have drawn here, right? So the bond which will be present between that H and C will be donated by this double bond, right? So hence, uh, this structure will be resembled in the form of a glucose. So what is the structure? The structure is nothing but the glucose. So at the first carbon, the aldehyde group will be present and remaining the total structure will be same, which is the six carbon compound called as a glucose. And coming to the mannose, so from the glucose, we can obtain the mannose in such a way that the process of the epimerization, which I have explained to you before. So if you see here, the uh, second carbon atom, there will be a change which we can see where the orientation of the functional group will be different when compared to the glucose with mannose. So OH group which is presented towards right side then it is called as a glucose and if the OH group is presented, presented towards left side then it is called as a D-mannose. So in this way we are going to obtain D-glucose and D-mannose from, from D-fructose, right? So what is the main aim of this Lobry d brain van Kinstein reaction? So this is the main aim. I mean the fructose should get converted to D-glucose and D-mannose. So that's what we have done, right? We have obtained the epimers from the D-fructose. So thank you for watching this video guys. If you like this video, just do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this topic, you can comment in the comment box. We are going to clarify your doubts immediately. Thank you.